How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is exclusive, high level organic chemistry content, volume five, what are stereoisomers? We look at the types of isomers, cis and trans, and EZ configurations. Let's go. Okay, volume five, what are stereoisomers? We look at different types of isomers, cis and trans isomers, and EZ isomers. The IB understandings and applications, stereoisomers are divided into two types, conformational isomers and configurational isomers, and we talk about the difference between those. The configurational isomers are cis and trans and EZ configurations, and we need to be able to describe the difference between non-cyclic and cyclic alkanes in terms of their stereoisomers. So we've looked at isomers before and we've seen that isomers have the same atoms attached in a different way. So they're fundamentally different compounds. But another type of isomer is known as a stereoisomer. And that's where they're attached or the atoms are attached in the same order, but they differ in their three dimensional arrangement. So those things are called stereoisomers, where spatially they're in a different arrangement. And we have two types. We have conformational isomers, which means that we can simply rotate a bond and that would form the same thing. That's known as a conformational isomer. Conformational isomers are generally things with single carbon to carbon bonds. And if we simply rotated one of the bonds around, we could form the isomer of the, the other thing. So essentially just rotation, um, simple conformational isomer. A configurational isomer is one where there is restriction in the, mole the molecule and they have a permanent difference in their geometry. And the only way I could form one isomer from the other was to simply break the bonds. I can't simply rotate it because there's restriction. So when there is this constraint or this restriction in a molecule, we have atoms that are fixed in space or groups of atoms that are fixed in space. In these cases, we need to describe the position of those groups. Now, because of their cyclic structure, cycloalkanes have a top side and a bottom side, which leads to the possibility of stereoisomers in those sort of cycloalkanes. So here we have 1,2-dichlorocyclopropane, and it has a top and a bottom, and the plane would be here, top and bottom. So we can see that the chlorines are, are both at the top in the first example, and then they're both there's one at the top and one at the bottom for the second example. Now, if they're both on the same side, they're both at the top, we would describe that as being the cis isomer. If there was one at the top and one at the bottom, we would describe that as being the trans isomer. Those are known as configurational isomers because they have the same chemical formula, but they have a different arrangement of atoms in space. Another example would be the two isomers for 1,2-dimethylcyclopropane. So the cyclopropane has three carbons connected in a ring, and then 1,2-dimethyl means we have two methyl groups. And the possibilities are that we have our two methyl groups at the top of the ring, or our two methyl groups at the bottom of the ring. Now, because there is restriction in the cycloalkane group, we can't simply rotate any of these bonds. So that means the only way I could make to, to make one from the other would be to break bonds and physically move them, and I can't do that. So the first example where they're both at the top, that would be the cis isomer, and the one where they are on different sides, that would be known as the trans isomer. Another example is 1,2-dichlorocyclobutane. So again, butane being a four-membered ring, we could have chlorines at the top or one at the top and one at the bottom. They're still isomers because they have the same atoms connected in the same order. They just differ in their spatial arrangement. And those are known as stereoisomers. We can also have alkenes that have these kind of stereoisomerism as well. So if we have a carbon to carbon double bond, that has a restriction in its geometry as well. So if we have two things on the same side, we refer to that as cis, one at the top, one at the bottom, that's known as trans. So both cyclo and alkenes can have this cis-trans orientation. However, in many cases of the alkenes, the cis-trans 
designation starts to break down, especially when we have a number of different things bonded to the carbon atoms. So in that example there, is that one cis or is it trans? Well, it's kind of neither. So when we have a situation like this, the EZ system of nomenclature has a series of rules that assigns the priorities to the substituents, the groups. So the first thing you want to do is you want to consider each carbon separately. So you essentially cut the molecule in half. And then you look at the atoms that are directly bonded to the carbon and rank them in order, in order of atomic number. So bromine has a higher atomic number than hydrogen, so it is given the priority. It's the number one. Number two priority would be the hydrogen. For the right hand side, we have a carbon which is then bonded to a hydrogen. And in the other one, we have a carbon that's bonded to another carbon. So using that rule, we've got one carbon, one carbon. Okay, I've got to look at the next one. Oh, a carbon is greater than a hydrogen. So the C2H5 has the priority in that molecule. Now, E geometry is where they're on opposite sides and Z geometry is on the same side. So Z same side is a good way of remembering it. So that one there is the Z isomer. A general kind of rule when you look at things with different alkane functional groups is to look at the longer the chain. The longer the chain generally has the higher priority. You've just got to be a bit careful if there's other functional groups that are attached to that particular chain. So here are another two examples. Assign E or Z configuration to the following alkene. So we've got to apply those rules for E, Z nomenclature. So we cut the double bond in half and we look at the two sides separately. Here we have a methyl group and a hydrogen. The methyl clearly takes precedence. On this side we have a CH2OH, which would be a carbon bonded to an oxygen. Whereas the other side we will have a carbon bonded to two oxygens. Okay, so which one would take preference here? Well, if we have a look at the number of bonds, well, we've got a carbon with one oxygen and then a carbon with two oxygens. So clearly the one with the two oxygens will take precedence. So here we have the two most important parts of the molecule on opposite sides. So that is the E isomer. In the second example, again, we do the same thing. The methyl group and the hydrogen is the easy part. We can do the preference very easily. For this one though, it's a little bit different. Here we have a carbon oxygen bond, but in the other part, we have a carbon, carbon, carbon bond. So even though that's a longer chain, which one actually takes precedence? Well, you've got to refer back to the atomic number. So carbon to oxygen, oxygen actually has a higher atomic number than the carbon. So that means that the CH2O is actually the precedence. So that would be the Z isomer in that case. Okay, volume five, some top tips. If you're unsure about the isomers, I highly recommend that you draw them. And the best way to draw them is to show the arrangement around the double bond. So set up the two carbons and the double bond and then put them in their triangular planar arrangement. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.